Ballad of the Lost Hair by Margaret Sidney Introduction Introduction Far from wild, far from wood, in a field rich and good. Near to hill, in winding glade, lived the naughtiest hare ever made. Father scolded, mother whipped, but every day away he slipped. Brothers three and sisters two cried and cried as off he f Sore, sore, sore was the sobbing. Wild, wild, wild was his race. Only the woods to echo his footsteps, only the winds his hiding pace. Once he fled, twice he fled, over meadow and garden bed. Thrice he had the rarest fun, forth was just another one. Mad the races, jolly the hare, little did he wreck or care. The winds might blow, the waters flow, over the hills away he'd go. Don't you come home, the father said, until you can stay in your little bed. One more race and you keep away, though you should beg and cry all day. Alack, he never came back. That swift-footed hare, that knowing hare, that beast who didn't wreck or care. Whether swallowed alive, or hung on a rail, or dancing along the water's pale, or running or walking, or leaping a star, he was gone so long, and he went so far, that the winds forgot his very name, and lost to memory, love, and fame. He became, in verity, the lost hare. Adventures Little bossy Whitefoot, grazing in a field, eating all the green grass, such a tender yield. Dreaming of the days when she would be a cow, how she wished that every time would come just now. She shook her frisky feet, and wrinkled up her nose, and tossed her pretty head, then trotted on her toes. When looking down she saw two frightened eyes, and the hare and bossy stood in mutual surprise. I'm sorry I have scared you, said this hare, considerate. Goodbye, I must be going, for it is very late. He turned him on his long legs. He scuttled through the glade. He held his head as if, forsooth, he never were afraid. The next he knew, with accent bold, a dread voice cried, Intruder, hold! I'll bite you, cried a goat, if you don't get off my rock. The hare could scarcely breathe, so frightful was the shock. He gasped, he tried to utter, a word with meaning fraught, but to save his neck he couldn't control a single thought. The goat was tired of waiting, he started for the hare, only to find a vacant place, only to stand and stare. For a flash of flying feet, a glimpse of gleaming eye, was all that marked his hero, who'd rather run than die. And now a neigh and a snort tremendous, aroused an echo most stupendous. A mustang gay, a mustang free, looked at the little hare carelessly, looked, then curveted, inviting to play, but the hare almost trembled its life away. No, 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 he cried, in wild protesting, I haven't come for play, nor any jesting. Ha ha, laughed the mustang, and then, Hey, hey! And kicking up his heels, he began to neigh. The hare stole off. In fact, he ran, as he hadn't run before, from beast or man. He tucked under fences. He skipped around trees. He didn't pause to take a look or even stop to sneeze. When a horrible bellow, a wheeze and a snort, came close to his ears with loudest report, and a bull most furious, with rage not spurious, dashed up with a curious bow and a stare. Little hare panting, angry bull ranting, ah, what a race, 
Oh, and he'll catch him. Then he'll dispatch him. Pitiful chase. "'Twas a hairbreadth escape, I tell you true. I'd have given a dime to have been there in time to see them sweep by those two. Three little lambs playing in clover called to the frightened hare over and over. Come with us into this pretty, pretty spot. Gasped he flying past. I'd rather not. Rather not indeed, each lamb rubbed his eye, then stared in calm disdain to see him onward fly. He may, then all exclaimed in accents terse, go further if he cares, and fare much worse. Whish, whirr, on his track, fast at his heels comes a flying pack. Baying, snapping, howling, yelling. Can he get away? There is no telling. Fly, little swift feet, over dale and hill. Take dashing, flashing by the mill. Tips of his toes, twinkle, twinkle fast. Don't let the dogs eat him up at last. Don't let the hungry, cruel, cruel jaws snap off his pretty little velvet paws. Tear off his ears in terrible sport. Don't let the naughty little thing be caught. Ah, a hole, a hole. In he goes. The dogs tumble up, then stare at his toes. They gnash their jaws and bewail their fate. But to eat little hair must wait, must wait. Conclusion Had ever a beast such mad career, such a hair-brained race, such a long, long chase, as this silly little hair recorded here. This hare, who wouldn't stop to fight, who ran away both day and night, who put himself delightedly among the best of company, who acted soon as a reckless part, then posted off with all his heart, forever he's compelled to roam. He never can enjoy a home. Hark! Do you think that's rustling wind? Oh no, it's nothing of the kind. It's this poor homeless, restless hare. Rushing here, there, and everywhere. List, do you hear the raindrops fall in gentle shower from treetop tall? Oh me, oh my, it's poor hair pattering by. By the light of the silver moon, 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 he runs to the rhythm of a dismal tune. In the gay, merry shine of a summer day, he is still running away, away. In cold, in heat, in rain, in snow, this poor little creature must go, must go. Perhaps if you're there, in time you'll see this wandering hare, this miserable hare, rush over the hilltop, bleak and bare. Do you suppose he wishes his home to see, his sisters two and his brothers three? Would he like to lie down in his own little bed, and does he recall what his father said? In long for his mother to tuck him up tight, just as she used to every night. Who can say, as always, he goes on and on and on and on. The end.